Hey guys, so I'm so excited because today I'm participating in a collaboration started by Julie at Stars of Jewels and it's all about how we homeschool, our homeschooling method, our approach, etc. So this is something that I've wrestled with, honestly. Whoop. My chickens, I think we're fighting. Um, this is something that I've wrestled with for years, since preschool days, with trying to pick a method of homeschooling to subscribe to, trying to figure out what type of homeschoolers we are. And what I've really learned over the years is that it is not even year by year, but it is day by day. And our family's needs are so different each year um, that it's really hard to say that we are exactly in the box this type of homeschooler. And the thing is, I know myself enough as an adult to know what type of homeschooler I would like to be, but my family's needs don't always fit that, and my kids' needs and their interests don't always fall into the perimeters of that homeschooling method. And so the beauty of homeschool is that we don't have to fit in a box, right? So I'm excited to share with you today what type of homeschooler, what our approach is, etc. Now I'm gonna put a link to all of the awesome channels that are participating in this collaboration in the description box below and also up here in the corner. So make sure that you check those other awesome ladies out today or this weekend um, and you might learn a whole lot about different homeschooling methods. So let's get started. So like I mentioned, we've kind of had different styles in our different years of homeschooling. So I'm gonna go way back to the beginning and kind of talk about what approach I took and where I was right and where I was wrong. So initially when we started preschool, I had a heavy focus on academics on that very first year. My daughter was literally three turning four. I have no shame in sharing that with you guys. I was way overbearing and I took preschool way too seriously in those early stages, but I think that's pretty common for a lot of homeschoolers who start homeschooling in preschool. So definitely had a heavy academic focus that year and we burn out pretty fast that year. Our second year, which was still preschool, we just kind of took the year and we just did five in a row. We did a focus on reading and that was such an amazing year. I started to really get a taste for living books and putting books into our homeschool and that's the year that we did five in a row. So we didn't focus on math, believe it or not. My four-year-old did not do a math workbook that year. We um, didn't focus on science. We didn't focus on anything other than just enjoying reading, and that was an awesome, awesome school year. So five in a row is technically considered like a unit study curriculum. So we took like the unit study approach that year, and it worked out very well for us. From that point forward, we started kind of taking an eclectic approach with an eclectic approach. I lost a syllable there. Um, eclectic approach with using merging unit studies but also finding curriculum now that my daughter was like kindergarten first grade age that I really enjoyed so that's when I started to pull apologia into the mix I started experimenting with different geography curriculums and that year was just kind of a tester year because I really just wanted to explore as I became more confident and comfortable in making my own decisions as a homeschooler and I really just wanted to see what types of curriculum were out there so we were kind of um, pulling Apologia into the mix. I was exploring different geography curriculums, and that's when I started to hear rambling, mumblings. I started to hear about Charlotte Mason curriculum, or Charlotte Mason method, and I was really interested, but way too scared to jump on board the train because at the time it seemed like there was no safety net, and I really wasn't sure what a Charlotte Mason method looked like and how safe it was to count on it, if that makes any sense. So. If you're not familiar with the Charlotte Mason method, it is the belief that you are teaching to the whole child that there's three parts of it, to every child's education and to that child as a whole. And I will put um, those three main points in the description box below so you can kind of explore those a little bit if you'd like, but I don't wanna waste this whole video in just promoting the Charlotte Mason method. But that is when I started to become interested in it and um, very cautiously started to explore it. Um, a few months later is when I went to a homeschooling conference and I sat in a few sessions with Sonia Schaefer speaking and she is the um, she is the lady behind the Simply Charlotte Mason curriculum and I just soaked it all in and really spent that summer thinking it over and that's the year that we started um, transitioning toward a Charlotte Mason education. So. That being said, we are still not completely there, and I don't know that we ever will be, because again, there's things that we love that don't necessarily fall 
under a Charlotte Mason method. And then there's a lot that I love about the Charlotte Mason method that we really, really believe in. So I would say we're maybe like 75% um, into the Charlotte Mason method, but the rest of the stuff, like for example, I really love science textbooks. Um, we do nature study, but I really love like the scientific, what Charlotte Mason method would consider to be dry facts. Those are really exciting to me. So I really do like to use our own science curriculum or um, I pull a little bit of the classical method when we are doing story of the world for history. So we're kind of all over the place, but the main um, foundation of our homeschooling is the Charlotte Mason method. So the things about the Charlotte Mason method that we really, really believe in and love are the nature study, the living books, um, and teaching to the whole child through habit training and through our environment, etc. Um, so okay. he must have found what he was looking for. So one of the things that Sh Sonia Schaefer mentioned when I was sitting in one of her sessions was that. Um, the Charlotte Mason method included shorter lessons, not wearing a child out, talking about all these beautiful ideas, and yet being done with school by lunchtime so that they had the afternoon to pursue their interests. I had no idea what that would look like because in my mind school was supposed to go till three every day. And so that seemed really scary. Like I said earlier, it seems like a lot of fluff. Now that I've really subscribed to the idea and I've really gotten down into the nitty gritty of some of Charlotte Mason's books and and writings on education, it is not scary at all to me. I'm very confident in it, and I'm confident making decisions now when they're in elementary school for their long term. And so I love this foundation that we're building with all these beautiful living ideas. So as the years have gone on, we've been able to kind of um, condense all of the academics that I had them doing that were just exhausting them and taking forever and now we really are done by noon every day so I'll give you a quick breakdown of what that looks like for us and um, and I have a bunch of other homeschooling videos if I remember I will link some of those like our day in the life type of videos below so that you can get an idea of what that looks like for us right now so right now in the mornings from 9 to 10 we are doing our beautiful ideas and that's all in our morning basket so these are all these beautiful things that i really want my kids to know all these ideas about our world and faith faith spirituality all those types of things we do from 9 to 10. now this includes some narration and dictation because i'm just basically reading them a bunch of different things a bunch of different ideas and i want them to tell it back to me in their own words that's a big thing with charlotte mason method is making sure that they're able to retell what you're reading to them and you also get a good idea of what they're picking up on as well so right now those morning basket things include poetry virtues habit training they include their chores it includes um, some writings about nature. It includes some current events. It includes hymn study, um, our Bible time, and then also a devotional time, which are two separate things in our family, um, a Bible study and a devotional. Um, but it includes both of those in our morning basket time. And we just kind of pick and choose from it all day long. Something that you will hear a lot if you are familiar or researching Charlotte Mason method is that you put out a buffet or a feast of beautiful ideas. And so it's not that we do the same exact things every day, but we pick and choose out of those beautiful things every single morning um, or at least four mornings a week and get to enjoy some of these things that set our mind on the beauty of our world and our lives. We take a break and go outside for a while from 10 to 11. That's just to kind of reset. My kids need some time to be outside. And then from 11 to 12 is our power hour. So our power hour is when we would do those short lessons, but they are academically focused. Those are when we are doing our math and our reading lessons. Now, my daughter does use the Simply Charlotte Mason reading and handwriting curriculum. So we do that then, but mostly this is just like getting down and doing that the math, the reading, the science lesson if we have to do one, things like that. We just kind of do like 10 to 15 minute lessons, a few of them in the afternoon. So that's from 11 to 12 and then believe it or not, that's everything. Everything's done at that point. So then from 12 to 1, we have lunch together. We do um, a little bit of read aloud in the afternoon, but at that point they do have the rest of the afternoon to pursue what they'd like. Now again, the Charlotte Mason method does include their environment being a part of their education and they're not just talking about the schoolroom. Um, she is 
basically including your family lifestyle and the things that your family does and the beliefs your family has. And so because of that, um, and I can do a whole nother section on this if you would like, because of that we don't have a lot of technology um, in our house yet. And my kids are young enough, you know, when people say, well, they're going to need this one day. I I mean, they're going to need to learn how to drive one day too, but I'm not teaching them that right now. So there's a time and a place to incorporate technology into their lives. But right now, my kids are into um, creating projects on their own. They're into pursuing more longer nature studies, more and longer nature studies in the afternoons. They're into creative play. They're into all of those types of things. So I would rather not hinder them by overstructuring their afternoons or by telling them, what to do or limiting them with technology at this point with these short um, and not open-ended ideas like an app or a game. So right now their afternoons are free to pursue their interests and that has actually worked out and become a very beautiful part of our lives which I didn't understand how that would look and honest to goodness when I first heard <laughs> the afternoons they should be free to pursue their interests I thought like so what we're supposed to like knit all afternoon or something. I wasn't sure what that looked like, but over time that's become something that I love in our family. My daughter loves to read. My son has been like writing his own storybooks. So it's just great to have that time and to be done with our formal academics. So I do make sure that my kids are on, on track with their academics, but it is not the focus of our school. So all that being said, um, when we initially started homeschooling, all of this nature study and poetry and all that was something that I avoided at all costs because I was scared of becoming that homeschooler. I don't know why I had this hold up about, um, about what that looked like and about that being too loose and not structured enough, but I'm glad that over the years, and it's kind of funny, I've become the homeschooler that I was afraid of. Anyway, that is our approach, a quick overview, a long overview of um, what the method that we love and kind of how we approach homeschooling. So make sure you check out those other videos. Again, those are all linked below and I will see you guys later. Hey guys, so I'm editing this and there's one thing I forgot to mention that I definitely don't want to fail to mention. And that is that through this method of, of homeschooling um, with the nature study and the hymn study and all these beautiful ideas, I really enjoy learning too alongside them. And I think that that's one, there's a quote, I don't wanna misquote it, but there's it's something about how parents need to enjoy being in, you know, in the out of doors as well. And initially, again, that was a shocking thing to read because I was like, mm -mm, nope, not gonna happen. I'm not gonna enjoy that. Sorry, Charlotte, you're wrong. But through pursuing all of these beautiful ideas, I 100% love learning alongside the kids. There's so much that I missed learning in school. I never learned um, about these poets. I never learned about these artists. I never learned three quarters of the hymns that we're doing. And I certainly didn't know how to identify a mushroom in nature. So these things and um, keeping my own, my own personal nature journal alongside the kids, this is one of the main reasons that I really love this method of homeschooling is that I, my heart is filled as well while my kids are learning. So anyway, just wanted to throw that in there real quick. Um, so yeah, there's that. Now I'll see you later. <laughs> Bye.